it's a relationship Friday. Should a sickle cell trait carry and marry someone with sickle cell uh, disease? Well, and we played out a scenario to you. Uh, but first, you know that we've discussed uh, the, the disease entirely on the show this week as we observed Sickle Cell Day. Uh, and uh, I thought that before I bring our life coach Amos Kevin Annan into the conversation, we would first listen to Dr. Ama Bene of the Department of Hematology at the Kolibutishan Hospital. This is uh, a little playback of a longer conversation that I had with her here on the show. About 25 to 30 percent of people have the trait. That is, they would have one S. In Ghana? In Ghana. Okay. And then in a study um, done, the pilot program that I referred to by Kweku Ohim Frimpong, they realized that 2 percent of the newborns had um, an S. Now, if you are an AS and you get married to someone with an AS, okay, depending on which of the genes you are going to give to your child, okay, for every pregnancy, there's a 25% chance mm. that you're going to give birth to somebody with sickle cell anemia. 50% chance of giving uh, birth to someone who is a trait or a career, that's an AS. Okay. And then another 25% chance of giving um, someone who is normal and has no sickle cell. Oh, yeah. okay. But that's for every pregnancy. Unfortunately, if you have two of such people, you realize that in real life, the firstborn SS, second SS, third SS. So you really cannot tell. Mm. You can't say that maybe I'm going to have four children and one of them is going to be uh, normal, one of them is going to have SS and that kind of thing. For every pregnancy, mm -hmm. that is the probability. Okay, but in yeah. the same way, somebody can also have four children, uh, somebody who is a career, yes. but would not Precisely. give it to any of the children. Yes. They will only have traits. Yes. Okay. So you still haven't told me what the doctor's advice is. What? Yours is to just expose. Precisely. Okay. For me, mine is to give you all the information mm. and to give you um, some of the challenges that you would have, especially if you have a child who has sickle cell anemia. Okay. Yes. All and right. then you take a decision. Okay. Okay, uh, we will be joined along the line by Dr. Sefako Enambankes. She's founder of Sickle Life and she's also a person living with sickle cell disease. Indeed, she was part of this earlier conversation on uh, World Sickle Cell Day. But Amos Kevin Annan is here. Good morning to you. Morning. Mm. How is that cold treating you? Well, the weather is having a harsh toll on me. <laughs> um, but we had a good time in Takradi. Okay. Yeah. Uh, with the men, we were discussing when men struggle. When men struggle? What must they do? When they struggle with what exactly? Struggle with so many things. You struggle with yourself, accepting yourself as a man. Uh, you struggle with the fact that your achievements are not recognized. You struggle with the fact that finances are an issue. You struggle with the fact that you are not setting about the woman who is around you, who says a significant one to you, and yet they treat you in a different way. You struggle with the fact that um, you are expecting to have a child and you are not having the child. And so that happens to be an issue on your mind persistently and consistently. Um, you struggle with the issue of job. Um, you want to change job. You get into a new job setting and the job setting is not what you had anticipated mm. and so there are so many struggles and then uh, you get to a certain age in life you decline your grinding you know becomes weaker your shine is paling off so how do you manage those um, struggling situations as a man especially when men don't talk about their struggles mm -hmm. but they process it through their thinking faculties how do men find solace within the safe zone of other men. Mm. Mm. And so it was more of encouraging the men to solidarize, 
around each other and enforce the, the, the trait of brotherliness amongst themselves. So this was an all men's conversation. It was an all men's meeting. So I want to we had three, that we had three ladies there. Up. We had three ladies there. Oh, okay. <laughs> so did you still get the men's Oh, yes, up yes, on, yes, on, yes. On yes. On and the conversation is ongoing. Uh, it was Gem X that put it together. Uh, they did very well, and they're hoping to do another one before the end of the year. And mm. I think that if we get men to be talking, men to be coming up with innovative interventions, I think it's very healthy, even though it's better to build boys than to mend men. Um, that's a whole conversation. It's better to build boys than to yeah, mend yeah, men. Yeah, especially because, okay. see, the girls are getting the grooming. The boys are not being built. And it is expected that boys and men will be able to handle their issues. Mm. But that is not true. Um, they also need our interventions. And we need to begin to pay attention to issues of the well-being of the boys and the men as well. Men's health issues, for instance. Yeah. It's not being discussed. I mean, it's, it's, it's a non-issue. Yeah. It's really well, at the back in the month burner. of June, we've been discussing yeah, the issues. Yeah, but, you know, it's only done in the month of June, whereas <laughs> the uh, I mean, all the cancers relating to women is persistently, consistently yeah. in the front burner, That's as true. though the whole health issue is just about women. Yeah. I understand that maternal issues are very important because they carry lives and therefore whatever goes on in their body, which is not really good, can impact another life, mm. uh, whereas the man's own is almost like just him. Yeah. Like uh, Kodri Agri said, if you educate a woman, you educate a whole nation, and if you educate a man, it's one man. So sometimes their health issues are also seen as, oh, men can handle their issues. They're tough. They're supposed to be able to cope with it. But it's not always the case. If we have the benefits on of another Friday in this month of June, we if should we be do. able to discuss, discuss men's yeah, issues. Yeah, we I mean, should. I think so, yeah, and we do. We are, we are clamoring for more is space. 30th, <laughs> so we can. We are clamoring for more <laughs> space. Let's <laughs> let's get the men's issue back on the table. Yeah. So that we can look at it. Okay. Well, this this issue we are discussing today uh, is mm. also a man's issue yeah. as well as a woman's issue. Yeah. Uh, but I can imagine that you had to advise people. Oh yes. Or people have had to ask you uh, what they should do. Yeah, yeah, in yeah, a situation. Yeah where they found somebody who has, hmm. uh, in simple terms, somebody who is perhaps AS or SS, yeah, and or the other SC. person is, is also equally hmm. having yeah, the same genes. Uh, you know, every decision about marriage, from proposition, acceptance, preparation, planning towards marriage and all that, they are all very difficult decisions. But this is a very difficult and demanding decision. Especially given the fact that our emotions always lead our cognitive part. So for instance, you are connected solishly and emotionally at the heart level, mm. where it matters the most. Then all of a sudden, some reality is brought to you to begin to review cognitively the decision that your heart has already made. Mm. That's a very tough one. And so many would say, well, I would brave the odds, hoping that I would survive. But that hangs on hope. And it doesn't always turn out what you were hoping. And especially where you have a lot of um, stories. I've been following Seth's um, Kez Jin story that he did, The Pain of, yes. of a Kez Jin in 2016. About, uh, Seth Seth yeah. A very good uh, piece. And he mentioned that 15,000 such cases are registered at birth. That was like very scary. Mm. 15,000 for our size of population is a huge number. Now, any time I've had to talk to would-be couple around the decision-making of this nature, you can see the emotions. You can see the emotions. And, and it, it's deep, overwhelming. And we are, we are trained not to show emotions. So I look at them and you're wondering if they really know what it is that they are doing. Mm. Hmm. And for a minute, sometimes you can say that the people have become numbed in their thoughts. That they are numb to danger, they are numb to reality, they are numb to societals you know, caution and everything, and they say, this is what I want. Hmm. 
And when you become so intransigent, you, I mean, there's nothing you can do. You just sit back and watch them take the decision, only praying that it doesn't turn out otherwise. You're almost sounding like if you realize you both have the traits, don't do it. You know me. I will never say don't. <laughs> Neither would I say do. That's why I said you're sounding. Yes. <laughs> when I sit there, I show them. Now, because, see, there are situations where people have escaped a knife-edge situation. Whereas it is they were AS, AS, they got married, and they haven't even had any situation of SS. Mm. Others to some SS and AS, they say they want to marry, and there is a challenge. But others too have said that they, their parents were same, but never had any, mm. even though the permutation says that there's a possibility of a 25% chance, like the doctor was saying. Some have not had any 25%, and yeah. they have three, four children. Others too, I heard uh, Nanea Brefo share a story of a neighbor of hers whose first three children were all sickless. It was frustrating, it was painful, and they lost all three, save one who was AS. So you see the reverse for them. Mm. The 25 now tends to be the AS, and the others become the SS. So it's a, it's a huge step. Some call it a step of faith because they lean on their beliefs as religious individuals mm -hmm. to take those decisions. But I have listened to a Joy FM news item, and also a documentary, and people were sharing their stories, how they were cautioned, but they had faith. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out the way it was. And so there's a need for people to exercise a lot of caution. And like I always say, choices come with consequences. So I cannot make a choice and wish to have a different consequence. Mm. I should ask myself, am I ready for it? And oftentimes, society is not ready to help you, especially when it is that society had cautioned you. And so those closest to you will be the one to make the difference. If they can rally around and support you, you can leave. Because I've heard stories of people who are still alive mm. and doing well. Yeah. And some to take a decision, we won't have a child. Others too, I've read all kinds of descriptions. I've been following a discussion online, which I showed to you. Mm. And you see how <laughs> the intervention, some say, OK, I'll get pregnant. When I go and check and uh, potentially is this, then I'll get I mean, rid of it. Terminate the pregnancy. I mean, why do you put yourself through something that is one avoidable. And it's not as though you would only be in love with one individual simply because there's the, that you know, fairy tale of they are the only one meant for me. And usually that's where the problem is. Mm. I recall this case where the lady's dad had ob objected to the prospects of the marriage, but he did so on the tribal line. Okay. Then that was the very first time I'd asked people of their genotype. And then when I asked, the lady volunteered hers. And then the gentleman mentioned, said, when did you know you were heirs? And the lady was heirs. Her senior brother died at age 32. And she had dreaded the possibility of getting into any situation with somebody that gives them the faintest of a prospect of an a SS child. And she had this at the back of her mind mm. as a commitment. And yet, they had, in the relationship, not discussed their genotype. It's not the first thing that comes to your mind. It doesn't. Really. You know, it doesn't. That's why I said, usually it's the emotions that takes the lead before your cognitive part comes into process the things that you see. It's usually when there are red flags that your cognitive part. Yeah. And so when you look at adolescents, for instance, that's basically why they make a lot of mistakes because it's the emotions get you ahead of your thoughts. Mm. And, you know, when I asked her, she asked him, since when have you known that you are heirs? You could see the facial expressions on both of them. And I was just sitting and watching. And right in my office, they were able to annul the relationship. And, but this is a lady who had, I mean, fought the father. 
And the father actually told her, you can have your husband, but you lose your father. But it was on tribal grounds, yeah. which was really which was something not. we could address later. Yeah. But I guess that was a, a divine hand that was trying to redirect her path. Yeah. And later she got to see the wisdom in that. So yeah. it's not all objections that tend to be objections. Mm, okay. Some of them are saving us from some fatal decisions we're yeah. about to make. Okay. But others can survive it and enjoy. All right. Uh, we stepped out. We wanted to first of all find out if people out there actually even know when you say uh, what's your sickle cell status and if you're confronted with a situation uh, uh, of marrying somebody uh, who probably has got the same uh, sickle cell status just like themselves and they ha there's a potential that they can have children who would carry uh, uh, you know this sickle cell disease would they still go ahead and then when we come back in studio we'll be joined by Dr. Sefako Enambankes founder of Sickle Life she's got a lot more to share with us fortunately she's not married so we can put the question to her stay with us <laughs> what do you know about sickle cell? Mm, so I know what it's a disease but I don't know actually what, <laughs> what does it mean. The other day they told us they will come to our church, but they, they are not able to come. So I haven't checked mine. So now if I check mine and it, she also is at the same day, then I can't marry her. You have to change. I can't marry her. What I know about sickle cell is, I mean, every normal individual has um, some kind of a genotype. We have the normal genotype, let's say, which is AA. And we have the traits, which is AS, and the sickle cell, which is SS. So I think um, it's rather unfortunate people only get to know of sickle cell when they are getting married. Have you checked your sickle cell status? Yes, I've, I have. I have. I think um, I did it back at you school. Know, I read a lot about it. You can be AS, I can be AS, we can get married. Um, it's all about um, some kind of calculations. It's all about percentages. For me, I wouldn't. If you know what it takes to have, a, to have just a headache, or an abdominal pains, then you know you wouldn't watch an innocent child go through that. For me, no matter the love, if only I'm in love, I have no. I, I'll continue. If I only I'm in love, then I'll do that. You don't mind that your child might be suffer, will suffer from sickle cell? I know that it's not always that a child might. So I'll take the risk. Sickle cell is a hematological condition, and. Um, uh, what I know more about is that when people are when people have it, careers are safe, but they stand the chance of sending it to another person. If you go to the hospital, the doctors will always tell you about um, a probability percentage. Probabilities are always probabilities, so I will still go, unless it is SS and SS. That one, there is no probability here. There is no magic. So there, people actually, hmm, but it's still very difficult. We'll go on Facebook, and here's our scenario. My genotype is SS, and my fiancé is AS. I love this girl very much because of her character. I intend to marry her. Question is, should I still go ahead knowing what I know? Uh, Dr. Sefako Enambankes, can I put this question to you? What would be your response? Well, um, this is a very difficult one, and it's something that's common for those of us who have sickle cell disease. Because having lived the condition, you're very um, cautious not to pass it on to your children because you don't want them to go through what you've gone through. Mm -hmm. So then when you are SS and your partner is AS, that means that there's a 75% chance of passing on the sickle cell disease, and then a 25% chance of having a child who is AS. So those are very high odds um, of having a child with sickle cell disease. So is that really a risk you want to take? I mean, there are options. Currently, there's something called IVF with genetic selection, which is basically, we already know about um, IVF, in vitro fertilization. But then in this process, um, because the partner is AS, what they'll do is that they'll select the A of the, let's say, husband. And then, because the wife is SS, they'll just take the S. So then we know that we are getting a 100% chance mm. of AS. But then it's expensive. It's not readily available. I don't even know whether it's accessible in Ghana. Mm. So elsewhere, you can go and do that. But then you have to ask yourself, is that something you can afford? Another option is um, you can do a test where they take the fluid around the baby 
and then they test it. So amniocentesis. Yeah. The problem with that is, after it's tested, if it's SS, the, the options are to abort or to continue the pregnancy. So then, if it comes out and it's an SS fetus, are you going to abort? So you could, first of all, you can know what the child's genotype is even before yeah. is uh, that the pregnancy elsewhere? is fully blown. Yes, it's done elsewhere, but then we don't do it in Ghana. In Ghana. Okay. But then even if you get to know, say you went out, out there and then you did a test, are you ethically inclined to have an abortion? How many abortions are you going to have before you get the child that is AS? Is that something you want to do? So then it makes it um, a very tricky situation. Elsewhere, people are very open to abortion, eh, sorry, to um, adoption, rather. Mm. Yeah. So then, um, if you get married and you're AS, SS, it's not a problem. You, you can, can adopt a child, children. can decide not to have children. But in our situation, if you are married and you're not having children together, everybody's talking about it. So then, it makes it very, very difficult for people who have such combinations to go on because everybody's expecting you to have a child together. So one of the important, important things we try to do is that even though the advocacy is for everybody out there, because people who have sickle cell disease have a higher probability of passing on the gene because they have the double abnormality, we try to educate ourselves. And this starts from childhood, understanding that it's a genetic condition that you pass on to your children based on the genotype of your partner. Yeah. So that you'd make the right decision early on. So when you meet somebody and you're even dating or courting, you make sure that the person is AA. So at least all your children will be carriers. And you know that you are making progress in the fight against sickle cell disease. Yeah, this makes absolutely sen uh, absolute sense, uh, uh, Amos Kevin Annan. And I, I just wanted to, because that was a direct question and to you, and I like the different aspects that you brought into this conversation. This helps your cause. If Certainly. You had when the doctors there. speak, they validate <laughs> our propositions. And I think it's, it's, it's laudable to hear her say that it's important that you do a careful analysis of the situation that confronts you. Mm. At the end of the day, you'll be the owner of the decision made and the only one responsible for it. If it is good, it will be good for you. If it is one that will give you crisis, it will be crisis visiting only you. Now, that's sobering. It has nothing to do with whether I have faith or I don't have faith. I'm a person of faith, but I, you know, I like a book I read some many years back, Faith, Foolishness, or Presumption. Some individuals, and this person who wrote this book is a, a teacher of faith. I mean, in the Western world, if you're talking about people who teach about the Christian faith in particular, in the aspect of faith, you talk about Roberts, Kenneth Hagen. The next one that comes is Casey Price. And Casey yeah, Price, the yes, Crenshaw Christian Center, he wrote that book, Faith, Foolishness, or Presumption. Now, people should ask themselves, am I operating in faith? And is faith a magic wand? Is it a magic wand? Or a miracle pill? No. It is knowing what has been said about you per the scripture. And going after saying. Mm. But it comes with consequence. To live by faith comes with huge consequence because the risk you're taking not knowing the outcome. And sometimes you know the outcome, the prospects of the outcome, as she narrated them. And then you thrust yourself into it. Mm. What if it turns out differently? Then you need another set of faith called the enduring faith. Because there's a receiving faith, but there's the enduring faith. Mm. Faith to help you to endure. If you don't have that, what do you do? Yeah. And I and would know because of your foundation, I'm sure you've come across mm -hmm. people uh, who have gone ahead and they have children. Yes. So take us through some of the, the things that they've, they've had to endure because of the decisions that they made. Um, often when we counsel people about sickle cell disease, it seems to be distant. If you are talking about HIV, then people understand that, like, if I go marry somebody with HIV, they could infect me, and then I would have the condition. Mm -hmm. But then if you tell them, if you marry somebody,
whose genotype is this and yours is this, then there's a probability of possibly having a child with this condition. It sounds so distant. Yeah. So they can't really put themselves in the situation until it happens. Then what happens much later is that other people would come lamenting to you that the doctor didn't give them all the information. If they knew this was how difficult the situation was, they really would not have made the choice. Mm. But then unfortunately, we can only do so much. Mm -hmm. There's information out. These days I say that ignorance is no longer an excuse. Mm -hmm. You can come to a doctor for information. But there's so much out there on, online that mm. even if you get it and you don't understand, you can seek clarification. Some doctors, yes, they, they, they um, are with a school of thought that because of advancements in medicine and science, yes. you are allowed to make that option. And then also with faith, you can do it. But then the reality of the ground, on the ground is those of us who have lived the condition know the um, kind of sacrifices our parents and our friends and our family have to make daily to ensure that we live a relatively normal life. Mm -hmm. Some of these people are quite wealthy, mm -hmm. so then they can afford certain things for their children. Some of them, it's not even physical cash, but then because they are health yeah. um, personnel, they have access to the and system. Some, some people also have time. Exactly. They can make time. Exactly. But then if you are um, middle class or lower class and you don't have access to the system, you don't have the funds, you don't have the family support, then even if for somebody having a child with sickle cell disease will not be that difficult, for you in your peculiar situation, yeah. it may be unbearable. And some people have all the money in the world, but mm. then when the child has an acute episode, sometimes the blood bank really has no blood. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's fault, but then the system is such that there is no blood when you come in at that time, and you need mm. to wait a few days. And sometimes those few days may cost a life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we, there's, there's no body around, there's no oxygen acutely, you know. There are things that your money can do, your child will be comfortable. Like I talk about avascular necrosis, for example, that I mentioned. I have a friend, he's, in, he's also part of Circle Life. Um, he ha lost his femoral head, so he walks with a limp. When we started um, university, he had a car because it's, it's quite painful and working with a limp limits your movements. Limits, yeah. I also have another friend, he has avascular necrosis, same condition. He has not lost his femoral head yet, mm -hmm. but then he's in excruciating pain. When he was doing his national service, the pain was so bad that at a point he had to stop working because lifting off into a, um, a trotro, the distance from the ground mm -hmm. to the, um, where you put your feet, the angle, it's so painful that he has to be picking taxis. How much do national service personnel earn? So, mm -hmm. And how are you going to use your um, allowance for taxis? So you realize that two people with sickle cell disease with the same condition, one even has a waist, but then he has a family that is able to provide certain things. And another family really cannot provide those. Um, it's not even a luxury. It's really yeah. something that they need. So then really everybody needs to take a very personal decision to know what they can afford and what they can't for their children. People are talking about advancements in medicine and science. It's true. There's advancement. You can have a bone marrow transplant and you will be cured. But really, is it affordable? I can't afford a bone marrow transplant at this time. Is it accessible? It's not available in Ghana. Maybe in Nigeria, possibly. You do have to go to the US and UK. Or South Africa. Yes. Pay medical bills, pay non-medical <laughs> bills. But then even getting a, a donor, a matching donor, is also something you need to consider. So then you need to have a holistic view about these things when you are counseling. So that later on, when the person is having challenges, they know that they were told everything. So then mm -hmm. they can't lay blame on you because you've done your part. You've sent them to resources where they can also get more information. Mm. Um, uh, Amos Kevin, and I've got to ask you, can, do you think a marriage can survive in the face of challenges when you have children uh, with, this, with this condition? Well, I mean, marriages have survived with children in these conditions. And so it presupposes that it could still survive. But like I said earlier, these are choices you make to which you own up and say, I am responsible for, so that you don't lay blame on anybody when it is that your child goes through crisis. I recall a conversation with a woman whose son will curse her 
when he's in pain. For bringing him? Yeah, the dad was abroad. And, and whenever the boy was in pain, he would just be cursing the mother. If you knew I was going to go through this, why, why did, did you, you bring me? And just be cursing. I mean, and the woman could no longer bear it. So now, what does she do? She tells me at a point she was even thinking the son should die early so that this whole scene will be over. Now, but does she, does she know the possibility? Well, she says, of that, she says that she knew some people when she was growing up, she knew some people who were ASAS and they had children and none was in that condition of SS. Mm. And so she also decided that if these people had it, then. I would also be able to be a beneficiary of same. Unfortunately for her, she had this boy. And then sadly, the, sec the next child she had also was the same. She was taking too much of a risk. You know, so I would say that the marriage will survive as long as the two in the marriage say that we're going to stand by each other and support each it's other. It's easy to say that when there's no child with that condition it is easy to even say though it. you know that you're both carriers and you could have a child like that maybe, but when maybe, the reality hits you maybe somebody's out there says we have a lot of money we have sufficient money to do the bone transplant mm. and all those things um we could access medical facilities beyond the borders of this country where there is none so if you have such a person they will go ahead and still take the decision because they know they have the wherewithal to pursue mm. other options but for those who don't have and still only rely on an element of faith I, and say that because I have faith, I'm also saying that there are people who have had faith and have realized that the faith they had could only receive, but they didn't have the faith to endure. And that's a very important one. If you have the faith to endure, you are not so full. Yeah. You still you, feel you it. You can survive it, right? You still feel it. You will still feel it. We've had a whole prophet of God wishing to be dead because he was being pursued by a woman who was heartless. And I wanted to say something. Yes. And to give a, an example yeah. of this scenario, I mean, when a child has sickle cell disease, they have routine medical reviews that when you are not sick, but then you need to be coming to the mm -hmm. hospital to ensure that your blood levels are checked, that if you are becoming anemic, that your, your blood level is going low, it would be spotted early. If there's an infection cropping up, it would be noticed earlier. Then interventions will be put in place to ensure that you don't crash, that's have a crisis. Mm -hmm. That's when you are well. Then when you are not well, you have a crisis. The crisis could last anything from a few days to weeks. And those are very difficult periods. Sometimes a person comes and they need a blood transfusion. And you know, in a certain, it's, it's not, um, just available. Someone needs to organize yeah. the blood. Some, mm -hmm. And when a child is unwell, or even an adult at my age, if I'm unwell, someone else needs to, needs to take responsibility for me. The, ho the hospital facility will not suddenly bring medication. Mm -hmm. so a family member would have to go and purchase the drugs, mm -hmm. bring other things. So every time this child falls sick, the mother or the father, somebody would have to sacrifice work time to be at the bedside. And you can imagine a, a middle class family trying to make ends meet, and then the child is constantly falling sick, and then somebody is missing work. Then, on top of that, you are having to pay medical bills because really some of the things that you need for the child are not covered by our insurance. Yeah. So then that's another cost. Mm. Then there's the whole pressure because sometimes there are other children at home. Mm -hmm. But then one person is staying in the hospital with the sick child. So then you realize that these things put pressure on the family unit. So initially you may be hopeful, you may have faith, mm -hmm. but then it tests your faith. Then at a point you, you really can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And we see it frequently that when these children come in, it's just the mother or the mother's family. You, you, yeah. There's no father. And what the families would say is that the man should go and have a child with somebody else so that then you would have a normal child and really if he's AS, SS, whatever and he goes and has a child with somebody who has the same, the same um, traits or whatever, he may end up having another child with sickle cell but then they don't understand mm. it. All they want is to have a normal child. 
So then they'll leave this woman to bear everything on her own, and then there's no man to be seen. But when you're explaining these things, because it's so far off, nobody wants to accept it till much later. I think it's also important to state that when somebody has SS, it does not mean they cannot marry. They can marry, but they have to be picky and choosy, yes. careful about who they decide to marry. So you can, as to you can avoid marry an AA. AA. Yeah. AA. Or so if you don't want to have not, children. Yeah. yeah, it's not a gloomy situation because mm -hmm. I've had a few conversations and it's as though if you are SS, you cannot marry at all. Mm -hmm. And that's, there's, there's nothing uh, further than the untrue because you can marry, except that you have to be, your options are narrowed. And so you've got to stick and stay with those options. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, then you jeopardize the um, prospects of your childbearing okay. or whoever will come. Um, so that's something I mm. wanted to chip it in. Okay, all right. Well, let's go to Facebook now. Uh, but before we don't even do Facebook, whilst we open the Facebook page, uh, Joseph from Malam uh, says, with this sickle cell issue, is really making relationship hard. Should marriage or relationship be based on character or sickle cell? Then what happened to our ancestors who had no knowledge about this? Uh, and this is this that's is, why they mystified. This is a they actually comment. mystified everything yeah. that happened. What happened is they were dying without yeah, knowing, knowing they had sickle cell, yeah. and mm -hmm. then they thought it was some spiritual, spiritual condition. Spiritual, because I watched in Seth's um, documentary somebody who said that um, they had put something under some stone, and any time heat was applied to it, that's when the child was going through the crisis. Mm. Uh, like. This explanation is really, really <laughs> uh, scary. Uh, let's see the comments that we have with this post uh, that we put up. Uh, Vincent Apia says, if you truly love her, you should love her enough to let go uh, for, her, for her sake and for the sake of the children yet unborn who have to deal with sickle cell disease. The illness is no joke, and I know you are unaware. Awake in your lab. Be kind to the children unborn. Peace. Okay, Raymond Newton says, don't leave the health of your children to chance. It is genetically not advisable for you to marry, uh, for you two to marry. One child with SS is enough to ruin your marriage. Yeah. Abe Kudosin says, interestingly, your genotype is SS, so you can go ahead if you have enjoyed your life as a, as a sickler. And here, I, I just want to make a comment because we say yeah. persons living yeah. with sickle cell. Sickle we don't cell. say sickler, yeah. so I hope we all get it. Uh, okay, uh, Bash says, please reconsider your thoughts. And this is the scenario that I have been playing back. Okay. That's what we put on Facebook. Okay. Please reconsider your thoughts. You love her so much to, to end uh, with your life. Take you after marriage. Okay, if you wish to stay all alone with your lover without children, then go on. But if you don't yeah. think of giving birth with her, it might be a disaster. So decision is yours to make. John Waters says, in this modern era, there's nothing like genuine love. Or moral says, please, it's, not, it's never advisable to marry her no matter what. Please don't take chances. Now James says, this thing called love, I wonder how some understand it. Uh, Salami says, if you really love her, as you're saying, then don't marry her to face trouble in the future. If you love her very much, then please let her go, because this is enough to ruin your marriage. Uh, that's from Us Hamats and Apana says, oh, carry, uh, uh, carry on, uh, no time to waste. Mm. All right, lots of comments, uh, but I like the way the comments are going. Yao Bonfa says, you have already made your decision, so no need wasting our breath. <laughs> okay, but somebody also says, please go ahead. It's tough, it's tough, really tough. Uh, here's another question directly at you, Mr. Kelvin. It says, Mr. Kelvin, <laughs> explain what soulmate really means. I have a question about sickle cell after understanding soulmates. That's from Isaac Amankra. Kind of have a feeling where he's going with this. I, I, oftentimes when people say that this individual is my soulmate, one party, they believe that they were born to live with them. And so it's predetermined before birth. Now, there is also a second group whose soulmate description is more tied to cognitively they have difficulty taking them off their mind. They're constantly on your mind. They are in your emotions. Mm -hmm. And you're struggling to take a decision to be away from them. And so the, there are these two groups that I have handled. Now, 
the, the first group usually is difficult to deal with because they believe that their prospects of marriage or relationship was predetermined before their birth. And so they don't have any power whatsoever mm. to do otherwise. And that can make you very desperate. And sometimes you act irrationally. Even when there are red flags, you still think, oh, it's okay. Only to go in and to realize that, mm -mm, after all, it wasn't. That's why the gentleman said this thing called love, cry, mm. then uh, others understand it. Now, if it has to do with the second one, which I described, where you have them constantly on your mind, they're in your heart, they're in your emotions, and they are literally on your case, which makes it difficult for you to stay off these individuals, then you have to begin to ask yourself some very important questions. For instance, can't I think of any other thing apart from this individual? Mm. And your answer would certainly be yes. So why aren't you thinking of other things other than this person? Secondly, if you are into your emotions, and one lady said, any time I meet a guy, I have goosebumps all over my body, and that was indicative of the fact <laughs> that we are soulmates. Now, since when did we use goosebumps as a determinant of the presence of love or the prospect for marriage? So you've got to be that. Then the other part of decision making, whatever thought keeps you to a person, when you start disconnecting from sin, it's easy to break away. Sometimes the phone conversations, you call it the person all the time. Mm. So they are always on your mind and within the space of your own setting. Um, if you can deal with these things, sometimes it's difficult. Uh, I can understand. Others overcommit. And some too get too close, too intimate, too early. And so it, it crowds out any prospect of saying, mm -mm, I want to dissociate from this trajectory. Um, so there's a need for you to weigh the options and each case and how you apply some specific interventions. Mm, mm. Any comments after the messages that we've read? <laughs> yes, um, I'd like us to realize that there's a difference between um, the fight against stigmatization of people living with sickle cell mm -hmm. disease and also the call for the prevention of sickle cell disease. Mm -hmm. So what we are trying to do is educate people so that they know that sickle cell disease can be prevented. Mm -hmm. So saying that people should be um, wise in their decision making is not um, calling for people to stigmatize against people exactly. living with sickle cell disease. Because there's a lot of stigmatization that goes on. Yes. Sometimes some people may feel that doing this is adding on to the stigma. Mm. But then we need to um, have a holistic view on this, that if we really want to reduce the number of children born with sickle cell disease in Ghana every year, currently we are hovering around um, 15,000, which is mm. too much. Yeah. Then we need to understand that even though we, we, we may get um, hurt a bit by what we are saying, mm. we need to understand what we are trying to do and then join in, make the right decision that is choose people whose genotypes are compatible with mm -hmm. us so that we don't pass on sickle cell disease to our children and also for everybody out there when you are interacting with a person living with sickle cell disease and based on that you're not going to um, have a relationship you shouldn't be rude about rude, it yeah. you should have a conversation and learn from it one of my volunteers recently had a conversation with me and it's currently ongoing she talked about um, she had met a guy and she was sharing a post mm. related to World Sickle Cell Day this mm. year. So then the guy asked her, are you a sickler? Then she says, no. no. Then he says, thank God. Then she says, I'm not a sickler. I'm a person living with sickle cell disease. Then okay. just like that, he blocks her. Wow. No conversation, no communication. And I'm like, really? Who does that? Exactly. Who does that? Like, there are better ways of going about things like this. So then for her, it may be good that you notice this now yeah. but then it will hurt I mean if we want to communicate with people there are really better ways of going about things so then let's be mindful of such things. But the fact that you are a carrier doesn't mean nobody can relate to you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah you see that's why I said that I, I mentioned the issue of the fact that they can marry except that the, the options are very narrow yeah. and society needs to be helped to also come to terms with these realities because they are also human you first have to look at the person as human and if the person is human
when you agree that they are human, you relate with them as a human being. Yeah. Because like the East Africans who say, and I like it, a human being is a human being because of other human beings. And so you've got to relate with them in a humane manner. Yeah. Um, using comments, sarcasm, and, and sometimes we have these anecdotes that we use that stigmatizes people of different forms, not necessarily people with a, a sickling status that we, we don't feel comfortable with. So there's a need for us to, to learn. Mm. And she rightly said that a lot is available to be read. And it's not everything online, though, which can be verifiable. Yeah. But generally, you can find some good resources out there mm. that you can, you can mm. help All yourself right. with. Uh, so in wrapping up with this conversation, uh, I just want to read uh, some messages that have come through. This one says, Mamavi, I'm suffering f uh, from a man who married me out of faith. And now... He's deserted me. Uh, that's Mado sending that message. This one says, good morning. Uh, my fiancé and I are AA. Would that be a problem given birth? That's from KK from Tim. I'm sure you know the answer already. This one says, there's no surprise uh, at all to me because we know these people. Hey, okay, no. I think I'm <laughs> mixing the messages. Uh, this one says... I will still say this again. This is the kind of uh, counselors we need for our media house, but not the other one. <laughs> Forgive. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, let me read the other part of your message. You say we are most grateful for such a, no uh, such a knowledge you are sharing with us this morning. God bless you, Counselor Kevin. Kojo uh, Ofori in Obuase. Thank you for the message. But that first part. <laughs> okay, so KK in Tema, you said you are AA. AA, that's, a -A, you, that's there's nothing to worry about, right? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, this one says, good morning, I'm AS. Oh, okay, I'm AS. Uh, does that mean if I marry AA, all my children will be AS? Kenaswa in Boga. Uh, and I'll end with this so that you can address that question. Uh, Freddy Kuma in... Uh, okay, yeah. So the, the ambassadorial role is also, you know, mixing up with all my messages this morning. Let me leave you to the answer the question of I'm AS. Does it mean if I marry, all my children will be, will be AS? Okay, so when you're AA and then your partner is AS, then there's a 50% chance of children being AA and then 50% chance of children being AS. So it's, it's a good combination. You should go ahead. And let me say that we are focusing on sickle cell disease. Mm -hmm. But then that doesn't mean you shouldn't consider other things. Other things yeah. There's HIV. <laughs> <laughs> there are other medical conditions that you need yeah. to get tested for. Yeah. And then we, they ha there's compatibility, yeah. um, religious beliefs, etc. So mm. then even though we are saying that when your um, genotypes are compatible, that's okay. Please think about the other things. Mm. Um, if I may, um, you can get more information about sickle yeah. cell disease yeah. from Sickle Life. We are online. Okay. So you can check out www.sicklelife.org for more information. Also on um, Instagram and Twitter, it's sickle underscore life. Okay. And then Facebook, sickle life. You also, it's, this is almost like a support group as well. Yes. So you can share experiences. Exactly. So the aim was basically prevention. Mm -hmm. Try to attract as many people as possible. But then we realized that there's not so much being done for persons living with sickle cell disease in Ghana. So then somehow, when we opened um, forms out for people to volunteer, we just attracted a lot of persons living with sickle cell disease mm -hmm. who have come together and want to um, interact with each other and also share their experiences so that other people would um, prevent the condition. Because as I said, when you've lived the condition, you really don't want someone else to um, experience it. So that's what's been mm. happening with us. But okay. would, you, would you accommodate people who don't have the condition but will want to be ambassadors because you also would need those kinds of voices to come and learn more and then they go and educate the others? Mm. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Actually, what yeah. we say is that everybody has a sickle cell story. Yeah. Mm. Like when you start interacting with people about sickle cell, you realize that everybody has a friend, mm. classmate, um, colleague at work, mm. somebody who had sickle cell disease, died from sickle cell disease. Or, like everybody has that sickle cell story. Mm. So we are open to the general okay. public, everybody okay. to just come on board and let's... Okay. Then I'll join so, you. Yeah, definitely I'll As a volunteer. Yeah. Sure. What, what do your volunteers do? So um, we do health talks. Okay. So we go to schools, churches, and 
corporate institutions and let's talk about sickle cell disease. Then we do medical screenings. Okay. So specifically about um, for sickle cell disease, HB electrophoresis, mm -hmm. which will give you your actual genotype mm -hmm. and not just say you are sickling positive or negative because there are issues with that regarding mm -hmm. those who are seen. Mm -hmm. Then we also have the website where articles um, are posted for people to read and then learn from there. Mm. I'm told that there are some labs that, you know, uh, mistake is mm. it SC for AA or something like that? Okay, so it then happened, AC. Yeah. Yes, so okay. what it is is that the sickling test, its purpose is to identify hemoglobin C. Mm -hmm. So when you say you are somebody sickling positive, you are saying the person has, sorry, the sickling test identify hemoglobin S, not C. Yeah. So when you say someone is sickling positive, you are saying that they have S in their blood. Mm -hmm. So that could be AS, mm -hmm. SC. In some SS. SS, oh, SS, exactly. Anything with S. Mm -hmm. When you say it's negative, that could be AA, AC, you know, anything that is oh, not S. Okay. So what happens is that when we say people are negative, they presume they are AA. Mm. But then there's a possibility that the person is AC. Now, when a person is AC and they have um, a child with somebody who is AS, there's a chance of having... SC. SC. And okay. SC is sickle cell hemoglobin C disease, okay. which is mm. a form of sickle cell. That's yeah. why it's problematic for us because um, people just hear sickling negative and then they assume they are AA. But okay. we really want people to do the electrophoresis so that you know mm. your exact mm. genotype, whether okay. you are AA, AS, AC, Electrophoresis. That's the test. The actual test, test to know yeah, your genotype. Thank you for the clarification. Welcome. Thank you for the knowledge that you've shared the insight that you brought to this conversation and it is my prayer that this will help a lot more people we pray so uh, yeah i volunteer as well now thank that you I very so that's all that's um, yeah we're in on your let team. us know thank you very much. Thank you very uh, much. and dr sefako ena bankers is uh, founder sickle life and then of course amos kevin and i don't have to introduce him any longer no, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for being here We've got Joe Metal in the house this oh, morning. Good. He is the reigning at seas of the year. And we're going to find out from him if he's had more cash after that at seas of the year. You know, anything has changed in his life. Uh, but we're also talking damaged goods this morning here on our show. And of course, Habitat Fairs. This weekend, the mini fair, the first mini fair, is happening at the Achimota Mall. We'll tell you how you can also own your own home. So stay with us here on the show. <laughs>